And so you have come. Bearing your sin like a badge of honor. What do you seek, pale rider? The return of mankind. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Today, we return to the end of the world in Darksiders 2, THQ's second installment in an apocalyptic franchise. Let's saddle up and charge in to find out if this genre-blending adventure can improve on the first title, or if it's simply hitching a free ride off the success of other games. After the Horseman War is blamed for starting the apocalypse prematurely in the first game, Darksiders 2 shifts the spotlight over to Death, who rides on a mission to redeem his fallen brother. However, this objective frequently gets lost under the tide of errands and tasks that are given to the Pale Rider. Expect missions to require sets of three to complete, some of which in the meantime are part of yet another set of three. When this rather rocky pacing is combined with Death's rather bland personality and wisecracks, it proves to be quite a drag until around halfway through the game where it finally manages to hit its stride. As with the first title, Darksiders 2 borrows heavily from various genres to complete the equation. God of War serves as a very sturdy foundation for the combat system, while puzzle-filled dungeons and vast overworlds mirror the quests of The Legend of Zelda. To help further flesh out dungeons, wall climbing and running, not unlike Prince of Persia, have been added into the mix to keep death busy in transitions between dungeoneering and button mashing. Numerous side missions contribute to an already very long game, featuring optional dungeons, bosses, and well over a hundred hidden collectibles that will challenge even the most thorough of completionists. One of the more noticeable features, however, is the introduction of an MMO-style loot system that allows players to mold death's style in combat. While at first you may cling tightly to every piece of armor you can find, this system quickly turns bland as chests, more often than not, will cough up lots and lots of lackluster and rather disappointing gear, and shops eventually become completely obsolete. Overall, while Darksiders 2 is quite unoriginal in its borrowing of so many genre elements, it still offers a, a uniquely blended flow that is quite enjoyable. Despite all the changes in design that Darksiders 2 has seen, the gameplay still feels remarkably similar to the first game, shifting back and forth between dungeoneering and combat with a healthy amount of acrobatics in between. While these elements jive together quite well, each aspect is a little bit shaky when examined separately. The loot system and skill trees allow players to craft a strategy for combat, be it fast jabs versus slower slams, elemental effects versus critical damage. But the game fails to elaborate on all the available stats to choose from, leading many to simply ignore it all and just opt for spamming a single button. Dungeons suffer from a bad case of repetition, recycling, and remixing the same pressure plates, levers, and destructible obstacles throughout the game. As a result, the degree of difficulty remains rather low, with potential brain busters not popping up until the final legs of the game. Climbing further reinforces this with very stiff controls that take a bit to adjust to, but many times prove to be a nuisance when a jump doesn't align perfectly with the controls and seemingly scalable ledges turn out to be impassable obstacles. The game gives off a sense of playing it safe, using repetition and an endless stream of tasks to keep the player engaged as opposed to taking a creative gamble. In addition to the many, many, many hours of gameplay that it provides, Darksiders 2 also offers up a consistently impressive array of visuals. Each realm has its own particular style and color palette, with dark stains of corruption always present to tie it all together. Meanwhile, combat is just as enjoyable to watch as it is to participate in. This applies tenfold for the boss battles, as well as the action-packed kill animations where you, when you manage to score an execution. Also worth noting is the music, that while tailored carefully to fit the circumstances, occasionally lack discretion in terms of volume, and become more distracting than a complement to the game. When it comes to replay value, Darksiders 2 brings a decent amount to the table. With customization available in skill trees and, and equipment, as well as over a hundred hidden collectibles to hunt for, and a bloody gauntlet of combat on the side, this game will keep you busy for a good long while. With that, let's get down to the bottom line. The story gets a six. While there are twists and turns in the plot, a very rocky start on the pacing combined with a rather forgettable protagonist leaves the player really rather detached and simply disappointed. Design gets an 8. The various genre elements are blended together rather smoothly, but the inventory system is in need of some serious rebalancing and the stats really lack clarification. Gameplay gets a 7.5. Though dungeons and battles are enjoyable, frequently recycled elements and mindless button mashing can sometimes leave the player with a rather dry taste. Presentation gets an 8.5. 
This is a good game that really looks good, but glitches and sloppy decisions in the audio keep it from being just so well polished. Replay value gets an 8. While a player may want to take a breather after finishing this very long game, character customization and hidden collectibles offer something extra to do after the curtain falls. This brings the final score out to a 7.6.